I know what you're thinking when you hear Oklahoma. Tornadoes, cowboys, cows roaming the street, and well, grass. But I'm here to show you there is so much more to Oklahoma. We have a bustling nightlife scene, thriving businesses, and much, much more. This is Everything Oklahoma. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Everything Oklahoma, where we talk about, well, everything Oklahoma. Don't forget to subscribe to become part of our Red Dirt family. Welcome back to another video, friends. So in today's unboxing series, let's unbox the city of Poto, Oklahoma. Now, if you're not familiar with Poto, I feel like growing up in Oklahoma, it's one of those names that you've always heard, but at least speaking for myself, I wasn't really sure where exactly it was until later on in life. So if you are like me, Poto is located in far southeastern Oklahoma, actually really only less than 40 minutes from Fort Smith, Arkansas. So if you lived in Poto, you could easily commute to Fort Smith. Now, a lot of people think that cities and town in Oklahoma, that their existence began in 1907 when Oklahoma statehood was established, but Poto shows that that cannot be further from the truth. Now, I know this is not a history channel, so we're not going to get into the long, drawn-out history of Poto, but just to sum it up very quickly. Various people have called this area home for thousands of years. Between 500 and 1300 AD, mound builders built their temples and even some burial places in the area of Poto. Also, ruined stones found in Poto have proven that there were European travelers somewhere, you know, in the vicinity of the Poto River Valley prior to the historically recognized exploration of the area, which was around the 1700s. That was when the French explored. I bet you didn't know that this much was going on in and around the town of Poto. Now, if you take another look at that same stone, some even say that it is evidence of Viking people traveling to this area. There was a lot going on in Oklahoma back then, or what would become Oklahoma. Now, this stone has so much interest and has sparked so much curiosity about it that a state park has been established around this historical rock. Now, in the early 1900s were really the years that the city of Poto just really began to glow up. Now, I researched their website a little bit, so I'm going to give you some quotes from there. It said the Amos Handel factory thrived and the Poto Daily News and Sun, which was their newspaper, was first published in 1895. And they had a subscription list that grew to over 300 people. Now, in 1903, the Whitville coal mine was operating near Poto, and although that mine was later abandoned, you know how sometimes that happens to mines, others opened in its place. Now, around 1904, a telephone company was granted a franchise in the area, and of course, that was quickly followed by electricity and a waterworks system in 1906. Now, keep in mind these dates that I'm giving you because if you have been keeping up, all of this was happening even before Oklahoma became a state. In 1922, Poto became the first city in the United States with a population under 5,000 people to be granted a charter for a Rotary Club. Rotary Club was a huge deal back then and still is now to some people. Now in 1933, the first two-year community college in the state of Oklahoma was founded in Poto. This college was later named Carl Albert State College after House Speaker Carl Albert. So honestly, the most interesting thing about Poto's history, or one of the most interesting things, certainly the most interesting thing that I found during my research was that in 1955, Dr. John Montgomery, who was a black veterinarian, he petitioned the Poto Public School Board to eliminate the racial segregation of its schools. Guess what? The board approved his petition, resulting in integration of the school system 
and marking Poto as the first city in Oklahoma to allow African Americans to learn alongside white students in its primary and secondary schools. Did you know that Poto was the first city in Oklahoma to integrate its schools? I, I honestly had no idea. All of my years in schooling, I have never learned that. So that just gives you a brief history of Poto, but let's talk about Poto today. So currently, the population of Poto, I say currently, I'm actually looking at the 2020 census. However, 8,807 people. Now, here is the most interesting thing that I found while kind of researching Poto is the fact that while a lot of small cities and towns are slowly fading away as in losing population, it looks like almost every decade Poto has actually gained a population. Uh, with the exception being, I believe from 1950 to 1960, they actually lost about 7% of their population, but every other year, it's been a 24% increase, a 1% increase. You know, it could be larger numbers, could be smaller. However, I'm seeing every year that they are increasing in size. So the racial composition of Poto for those interested, 61% Caucasian, 1.1% African American, 12% Native American, and the rest of the population, oh, it looks like it's about 13% Hispanic or Latino, and the rest of the population is either mixed or very, very small uh, percentages of Asians as well as Pacific Islanders. Also interesting, and I'm getting my facts from the 2000 census for this because I'm not finding the data from the 2020 census as far as how the population is spread out. But in 2000, 24% were under the age of 18 and it spread pretty evenly from there. 12% in the 18 to 24 range, 26% in the 25 to 44 range, and 19% and 16 respect or percent respectively from 45 to 64 and 65 and up. So it looks like the median income uh, in the city of Poto was around 27 to 32,000, somewhere in there, and about 22% uh, of the population actually falls below the set poverty line. So I checked out Indeed.com to look at the employment situation going on in Poto. I actually found a few jobs in Poto that were hiring and it wasn't all just retail and convenience stores either. There's several companies. I saw a rehab facility, social services, all of which are hiring there in Poto. Now for most of them, and it's some sort of advanced degree is required, something beyond high school. However, However, if you live in Poto, there is a chance that you would be able to basically work where you live. Now, of course, some of the jobs mentioned were in Fort Smith, Arkansas, like I said, which is a major city or a bigger city right there by Poto, about 35 to 40 minutes away. But there are places in Poto if you want to stay at home and work. Now, if you are still in the age range to where you have kids at home and you need to think about school, it looks like the Poto School District is not one of the worst that we've talked about on this channel. So student teacher ratio, about 15 students per every one teacher with a 90 to 94% graduation rate. So that puts them in the top 50% of schools in Oklahoma which I know we aren't really known in Oklahoma for our school systems and shame on us. However, it looks like Poto is pretty good. Now, Poto School District ranks among the top 20% of public school districts in Oklahoma for graduation rate, for diversity, and for community size. 
So as far as education goes, you have three options in Poto for higher education. You have the Poto Beauty College, you have the Kiyomichi Tech, um, we unboxed Hugo in the last video, and if you remember, they have a branch there in Hugo. Well, Poto also has a branch. And then I would say most popular, you have the Carl Albert State College, the Poto campus. And this is where I think a lot of their young population comes in because of the students at this school. Let's talk about some Poto real estate. Now looking at Realtor.com, I see about 75 houses for sale in Poto, Oklahoma. It looks like the median home price is about 215,000. So that fits well within the realm of what the rest of the state is doing. I thought for a moment that Poto would be like a little cheaper, honestly. However, it looks like well, it's still some cheaper, but you know, it isn't crazy cheap there. So, well, looking at real estate, I found a home that of course needed a little TLC, some love and care, but it was only listed at 137,000 for six beds, four baths, over 3,000 square feet. I was like, oh my gosh, this home is perfect. Just a few little touches. And then I looked on the inside. I was like, oh my gosh, we are truly building a house at this point. But when looking at other houses here, I wanted to look at just kind of a standard three bed, two bath, and I found one for 285,000. Like I said, three bath, three bed, two bath, 1,797 square feet. Um, a price increase of 14,000 at the beginning of January, which tells me there may be a demand for homes in this area if they are upping the price on it. The house is absolutely beautiful, both inside and out and sits on two acres. Looks like a lot of homes here. You know, some of them sit on some land. So I feel like that's good if you wanna get into agriculture or just have some space to breathe. So looking at livability in Poto, let's let's just get into this for a moment. So I told you about the education, I told you about jobs, employment, poverty, but looking at crime, I glossed over that at first because I said, yeah, it's Poto, it's not gonna be pretty bad, but guys, crime in Poto is really picking up. So in Poto, out of 100,000 people, 4,386 people have been victims of crime. The national average is 2,346, so Poto is almost double that. Now, looking at some of the crime that I'm looking at, you know, can't discuss a lot of it, of course, on YouTube just because of trigger words and all of that, but the majority of their crime is going to be burglary and theft. That seems to be the biggest um, thing going on in Poto right now. So if you take those numbers out, crime, especially violent crime, really isn't that bad here. So as far as hospitals go in a Poto, there are several hospitals or medical facilities there. I see the Eastern Oklahoma Medical Center, which is located on Wall Street in Poto, Oklahoma. And it looks like they have the walk-in clinic, I believe of the same name, Eastern Oklahoma Medical Center, but they have a walk-in clinic, so you're kind of not clogging up all of the emergency rooms. There have several doctors I'm seeing listed. So if you are in need of health care while in Poto, it looks like they have you covered. Of course, if you need more specialized treatments, you do have four Fort Smith, which is located 35, 40 minutes up the road. I feel like they would be able to do more. No need to drive 30 minutes to find a grocery store though. It looks like Poto has several to include a Walmart super center. It's so sad that that is now my measure of how big a town is. I'm always like, do they have a Walmart? Is it a regular Walmart? Is it a super center? But Poto does have a super center as well as I found Harps grocery store. It says price cutters, but it looks like it's Harps. And I have a friend who is in Poto quite often and she told me their chicken was amazing, used to be amazing, you know, a year ago. Don't know about now, but she said they had really good chicken. 
So Podo is showing us that they are not just one of those towns that used to be a big booming town that are just kind of fizzling away. Podo has a lot of life and growth left in it. As I stated, the population is growing every decade. So it looks like Poto will be around for quite a while. Let me know in the comments section how many of you all are from Poto, have been to Poto, have memories of Poto. I don't know, just share them down below. Let me know what you thought of this video and I will see you in the next video, friends. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.